Hello learners, in this lecture we will see what is regional planning, what are the advantages of that and how do we need to see that. So the regional planning aims at the formation of an effective network of airports on the national basis. The improper location of airports may lead to the airspace conflicts and wastages of the natural resources. So coming to the advantages of the regional planning, it enables to implement the zoning laws in the areas where the new airports are coming up in the future, right? So whenever you're putting up an airport, you have to put certain zoning laws so that in future that will not create a problem. The efficiency of the airport in handling the air traffic is greatly increased. There is a proper coordination of the airports and the airports are not closely spaced. So this is the advantage of what you get when you go, when you plan an airport according to the regional planning. The civil aviation organization of the central government prepares the regional plan in collaboration with the states and it contains the following particulars. Approximate location of the airports in the national map, classification of the airport, location of the airstrips and routes of air travel and etc. So sometimes they will ask us uh, what are the facts that are collected for making the airport for regional planning and all. So there are four facts which they are actually which we actually collect for making the airport regional planning. The first is the air traffic. Then we have when we need to know about the existing airports. Then we need to know the population and then the topographical features. So coming to the air traffic, the existing modes of transport are studied and future expected volume of air traffic in terms of passengers, mails, goods, etc. is determined. It will enable to decide the number of aircraft movements required in the future, right? So whenever we do any construction and all, let us say even if you go for the highway construction, whenever we want to put up the road and all, first we need to understand how much amount of people will come on that road. I mean, how much uh, vehicular movement will happen if it's a two wheeler, three wheelers and all. And after that, we do all this uh, analysis and then we try to design our road. In the same way, when we go for the airport also, so we should be knowing the air traffic, right? The existing modes of transport are studied and future expected volume. Let us say at present, if there are this much number, then after 10 years, what is the expected traffic out of this? For, for the next 10 years, if this much traffic is coming, then how should my airport or how should my runway or how, how should my, how big my airport should be, right? All those things we need to consider. The next is the existing airport. The distance, population and economic character of the surrounding areas getting air service has studied. It is also to be seen that two adjoining airports are located sufficiently away from each other so that the encircling radius of two aircraft, which we saw in the previous lecture, that is a minimum uh, circling radius, landing simultaneously do not overlap. Even this also we need to study. If there is any existing airport, then whenever we construct a new airport, we need to make sure that proper space or proper uh, gap, proper distance is maintained between the two airports so that will not interfere in the uh, encircling radius of the two aircrafts. Next is the population. The tendency of population to save travel time should be studied along with other characteristics of population such as income, business, activities and etc. And also you should see so that the airport is put up in such a location so that it is easy for the people to come and have access and all. And the last one is a topo topographical feature. The topographical and the geographical features of the locality dictate the suitability of an airport from the regional planning basis. Also looking at the topography and all, how is the terrain and all, those things also matters and those data also we need to collect for making the regional planning. Yeah. So I hope you have got an idea. It's a very small topic. Sometimes they will ask you about the regional planning and uh, they'll ask you what are the data that is collected. So these are the points that you need to write. So hope you got an idea. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.